Hey, 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 everyone, Rosbeski here, and welcome back to our Wi Fi Wonder Cup battle series, in which you guys challenge me to a Wi Fi Wonder Cup battle. This week's battle, guys, is against a good friend of mine, Taylor. Now, Taylor, or a wild chikorita, as she's known in the YouTube world, is an absolute fantastic lass. Not only is she brand new to the YouTube world, but already she has amassed quite a following, and with good reason. Guys, if you enjoy my LPs, go and check out her Emerald Randomizer. It is absolutely fantastic, and not only is she good at commentary, but she's an absolute fantastic artist as well. She does uh, Pokemon drawing videos, and honestly, she's like an art goddess, so make sure you go and check her out if you know what I mean. I will put a link to her channel in the description below so you guys can go and click the fuck out of that. Anyway, guys, let's get hyped as we get on to today's battle. If you guys watched Wednesday's Wonder Trade Addictions video, which I urge you to go and do, because this series goes hand in hand with the Wonder Trade Addictions, then you'll have seen what team we have got, and I was actually quite pleased with it when we got it. So, first of all, we've got Fun Sparse, our Dun Sparse. We've got Floatzel, Mudkip, Sableye, Bergmite, and the Gooey Love Muffin, Ditto. Now, first of all, looking at our team, our MVPs are probably going to be Floatzel, Sableye, and maybe even Bergmite. Bergmite has got a fantastic moveset, as does Floatzel. Sableye could have been a little bit better with its ability, but let's go just run through the moves. Dunsparce has Rage, Defense Curl, and Rollout. If we can set up a Defense Curl and maybe go for the Rollout, we might be able to sweep through a couple of her Pokemon. Floatzel, absolutely fantastic. It's really fast. I've been swept <laughs> by a Floatzel before. It's got Waterfall and Ice Beam, so got a little bit of coverage there. Mudkip has Mud Bomb, not too bad. Sableye has Zen Head, but Scratch and Recover. It's a shame that its ability was Stall. If it was Prankster, we might have had a little bit... It might have been a little bit better. Bergmite has Ice Fang, Rapid Spin, Avalanche, so very good. And obviously, Ditto has Transform. Unfortunately, it's not Imposter Ditto, but we will take it anyway. Moving on to Taylor's team. As soon as I saw this team, guys, I was uh, face palming. I was like, fucking hell, Arceus, you're just, you're just not with me these last couple of weeks. You're just not with me these last couple of weeks. Anyway, straight away, Trevenant. Trevenant is going to wall the fuck out of a lot of my Pokemon. You just look at it, we've got a serious weakness to grass in this team. Because Floso, our MVP of the team, is going to be absolutely destroyed. Yes, we do have Ice Beam on the Floso, but it's not going to be enough because... Trevenant is probably going to have Horn Leech or some kind of grass move, whether it's Leech Seed, Horn Leech, I don't know. It's going to absolutely destroy us. It's probably going to have Shadow Sneak in there as well. That isn't going to be good. Not good at all. Next up is Absol. Not too worried about the Absol. Probably has Sucker Punch. It does hit hard, but hopefully we can take it out because it's a bit of a glass cannon. Next up, we've got Claw It, sir. Again, that's a Pokemon I was a little bit scared of. Not because we could, we can't really super effectively damage it. And it's very bulky. It's going to take us out probably if it decides to try and set up or whatever. Next up, we've got Eevee. Again, Eevee's a bit hit or miss. It might be... I think we might stand the best chance against with Sableye. But then again, it all depends what moves it has. If it's Bread Yawn on it or if it's got Wish on it, then it could, could be an issue. Torchic up next. Not too worried about that. And I'm not too worried about the Hound Dower as well. Because we should be able to take them out with the Rollout on our Fun Sparse. The Float so should be able to take that out as well. The Mudkips. I'm not too worried about those Pokemon there. But either way, guys, let's get hyped and let's get psyched as we jump into the battle against a Wild Chikorita, Taylor. Now, guys, I was really looking forward to this battle. Um... As Taylor issues a challenge, or Tay, as she's nicknamed in this show, she is dressed fantastic. She's dressed for success as we send out our Dunsparce against the Hound Dower. Now, I thought, well, I didn't know she was going to be sending out the Hound Dower, but I thought, two Fire-type Pokemon, I think we should be able to get in there, not too bad. And we got the super effective move off with the first rollout. Unfortunately, she knew the threat and got rid of us with a cheeky roar. Now, we don't want to leave Bergmite in here. We need to keep Bergmite for later. So, we switch Bergmite right back out of there because we know the Hound Dower could potentially have a fire move. And we really do need Bergmite for later. So, our beautiful little Mudkip comes in. Oh, look at that. But, there we go. It doesn't look like the Hound Dower actually has any kind of fire move on it. But it does have Smog, which goes and poisons our Mudkip at the first bit of bad luck for us in this battle we go for the mud bomb which is going to be super effective but unfortunately we don't kill it if we got a crit there that may have been absolutely fantastic we take the poison damage we should be able to live the next bite and then move on and finish off the hound hour unfortunately we get a second bit of bad luck which means we flinch and we die to the poison so mudkip is gone already mudkip beautiful little mudkip is gone and she's already one 
up on us. We send in Fun Sparse because we know the Fun Sparse has got outspeed with the rollout and we even up the score. Goodbye, Hamdower. You will not be forgotten. The only problem is now that we're trapped into the rollout, but hopefully the damage is going to be boosting up. But she brings in the claw. It's her, as we already know, is bulky as fuck. The crab hammer comes in and takes off an absolute butt. Son, it took off about a third of our health and we take off next to nothing and that was the second rollout. We are stuck into it and she takes advantage of that with the sword stance. That was absolutely fantastic play there by her and we're stuck in the rollout. I really just needed a crit. I really needed a crit to take off as much damage as possible. The crab hammer is up and it's just gonna fly out, kill us thanks to that sword stance but... There we go, we've taken the claw, it's down to about half health, which we'll take on. Next up, we bring in the Bergmite, because what else can we do? The rest of our Pokemon are probably going to get wrecked by it, and Bergmite is defensively quite good, which scares out the claw, which is fantastic, and the Torchic comes in. We go for the Ice Fang, and that is going to do a decent amount of damage on Torchic. It's not very effective, I was hoping for the Freeze, that's what I was going for, the Freeze there, but it didn't come off. So, in we bring our beautiful little save life, because we didn't want to mess about with that, especially because the fire spin is coming in. So Sableye is going to be taken on the Torchic here. We're trapped in the Vortex, but against the Torchic, we shouldn't be too much of an issue. So, he's going to go for the Sand Attack to try and lower our accuracy even more. I really dislike that. Really dislike those tactics, but hey, they're going to work. But, not this time. We go for the Zen Headbutt to see how much that takes off. It takes off a decent amount, considering it's not Stab on our Sableye. Now, remember, Sableye has a Recover, so it's got a healing move here. So that is exactly what we're going to be doing next. She misclicked, she told me there, with a Quick Attack. And uh, we go for the Recover to boost our HP up to near full. But obviously, the Fire Spin is going to knock us down a little bit more. Stall is really what hurt us here. Um... With our Sableye in this battle, I really needed it to be Prankster, but either way, we're going to get off another Zen Headbutt, and we should be able to kill the Torchic, right? Not right, the Torchic holds on. Her Pokemon have a, a, a knack of being able to hold on and live. So the Torchic is gone, and she's going to be bringing in her next Pokemon, which is Defiance. What a name! What a name for an absolute Defiance! So, in comes Defiance, and we're going to heal up to full health. So it's like our Sableye was never in the battle at all. We don't want to be staying in on Defiance, the Absol, so we're going to be switching out to our next Pokemon. We're going to be bringing back in our beautiful Bergmite, because it should be able to take any hits, and it goes for the Sucker Punch, which is absolutely fantastic. Fantastic. The Slash comes in next. I'm kind of hoping that we will take that hit, but we don't take it very well. It takes off way more than I thought it would, and I should have gone for Avalanche there. I made a mistake. I made a mistake, and I should have gone for Avalanche, but I do that this time. But look how much damage that Slash does. It's absolutely unbelievable. We go for the Avalanche here, and we take the Sable, uh, uh, the, the Absol down to 1 HP, maybe 2 maximum, and that is what I mean about her Pokemon just have a knack of living. I predicted the Slash again. Uh, so, I brought in our Sableye to kill it off with the Slash. As you saw there, the, uh, the Absol went for a future site, which is going to play an important part later on. But we killed the Absol, which is absolutely fantastic. So, that's our second kill. And in comes the issue. The Trevenant confused our poor little Sableye. Now, obviously, we're not going to be wanting to leave Sableye in for too long. But, what can you do? That Sableye's own dirty trick's being used against it. We go for the Zen Head, but we actually break through the confusion, but it does next to nothing. That's not very good. So we're going to switch out. We want to bring in a Pokemon that can deal with the Trevenant. So we bring in little Ditto, our gooey little love machine, to see if it can take the hit and then transform. Obviously, it ain't going to do that. It takes a future sight. And Ditto, the gooey little fucker, just stick to breeding my little man because you did absolutely nothing there. That was a bad play by me. I'm going to admit that. That was a very bad play by me. We bring in our Bergmite, hoping that we'll get the avalanche off and kill it, but it does just enough damage to kill us off. That Horn Leech has taken... The Trevenant back up to almost full health, maybe 2-3 HP off of full maximum. So we are in big trouble here. We are left with next to no Pokemon. Trevenant gives us a little break and leaves the battlefield. We have got our Sableye in. Who's she going to be bringing out? She brings in the Eevee. We go for the Zen Headbutt. And we miss. We miss. Our luck is not here in this battle. She's absolutely destroying us. Now we get yawned. Sableye cannot stay in here. This, guys, is an absolutely amazing tactic. She knows all I've got left is Floatzel and Sableye. She switches out. She switches out back into Trevenant because she knows I have to do the same or I'm risking sacking off the Sableye. I wish I had saw this. I wish I had, but I didn't. And in comes the Floatzel. Now, 
Either I sack off the Floatzel here, or I bring back in the Sable Eye. I bring back in the Sable Eye because I know Horn Leech is on its way, and that will one hit KO our Floatzel. It's not strong enough to take a powerful move like that. Horn Leech comes in on our Sable Eye, and it does so damn much. Sable Eye just needs to be bulkier, I suppose. That's what Mega, Mega Sable Eye is going to be coming in for, but we are just not good enough. We just can't do anything. We go for the recover here because it's the only thing we can do. We're basically trying to stall her out here, but it ain't going to last. It's not going to last long because that Driven is at full HP. It... Horn Leech is so damn overpowered, guys. It's so damn overpowered. I try go for the Zen Head, but here, because I want to do as much damage as possible, load its health as much as possible, sack off the Sable, I bring in the Floats on, hopefully one hit KO it with the Ice Beam, but Horn Leech is just in my way. Now we're confused. Now we're confused. Can we get off the next move? Please, Sable, I yes, we do. We get off the Recover. We're just trying to stall her out here, guys. We... I'm staring right in the face of the barrel. I've got shotgun two under my chin and it's ready to pull the trigger. We are just not in a good situation. Can Sable I get off a little bit of damage? Can we get off some damage here to little Sable I please my beauty? You hit yourself in the fucking face, you stupid little ghost Pokemon. And that's it. That's it. I was hoping that maybe she'd go for the, the Confuse Ray or another move, maybe even switch out, but she doesn't. And we sack off the Sableye. And unfortunately, Trevon is at full health again. That Sableye did next to nothing. Horn Leech OMG. That is one hell of a move. And Flusel, we go for the Ice Beam. We pray to Arceus that we get a crit or a freeze or something, anything. It takes off over half health. The Horn Leech comes in. That is going to basically just mean that we were never in the battle at all. And Floatzel, rest in peace, my beautiful little water weasel. You died. There we go, guys. It was absolutely fantastic. She, she played like an absolute... She played me like a fiddle, ladies and gentlemen. Taylor... Oh, love, you played absolutely fucking brilliantly. It was unbelievable. Though that, that EV switch, that EV switch was an amazing pivot. It was so clever. She knew that all I had left was the float soul and the sable eye. You're on the sable eye. Forced me to switch it out. I should have seen it. I should have fucking seen it, but I didn't. She played like a fucking champion. There we go, guys. Who, who did she have left? She had the Torchic left. We did lose 4 0, but the Torchic was basically dead. The. Or the Cloitzer? I can't remember. The. And that was quite, that, that, I suppose that wouldn't have died either, I don't think. She just absolutely steamrolled over our team. And it just shows you, all it takes is to have the right Pokemon for the people you're playing on this Wonder Cup battle. And it's all about those moves, that recovery move, that attacking recovery move. And Horn Leech just was the main point of that battle. If, if, if Trevenant didn't have that... Who knows the way the battle may have gone, but it did. And she played absolutely fantastically. She used her Pokemon to absolute expertise. And that is why she won. So well done, Taylor. A wild chicory. Uh, guys, remember to go and check out her channel because, as I said before, she's absolutely fantastic. And she's a rising PokeTuber and she's only been doing it for a month. So, I mean... She is very, very good. But either way, guys, if you enjoyed today's battle, then please hit that like button. If you're not already subscribed, then please go ahead and do that as well. If you've enjoyed today's battle, if you want to be part of next week's battle, then remember to put your friend code and your Twitter, if you've got one, in the comment section below, and I will pick somebody from there for next week. But either way, guys, I've been Razbowski, you've been the beautiful bastards, as always, for watching, and I love each and every single one of you. Goodbye!